Hey, what's up guys? John here. Regional banks face another hit as regulators force them to raise debt levels. This just came, breaking news 30 minutes ago. This is going to completely restructure funding and financing for small businesses and Americans as we know it. Now, most funding for businesses, for cards, for credit cards, for personal loans, for commercial real estate, it all comes from these small banks. As these banks start to fail, so does America. Silicon Valley Bank failed about five and a half months ago, then followed Signature Bank. You had First Republic. You had PacWest being acquired by Bank of California. You have all this consolidation that's happening right now, and it looks like this is only just the beginning. I'm gonna break down clearly what's going on with verifiable facts so you can see things for how they really are. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate other people about what's really going on in the US economy. And if you wanna fix your credit, you wanna position yourself for the greatest wealth transfer of all time, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, if you have a problem on your credit report, do not let it sit there. In many cases, one negative item can stay in your report for upwards of seven years. One late payment can go on your report and remain there seven years and hit your credit almost 180 points. So on average, it's about 90 to 120, but it's 180 points is the maximum that it can do. Some significant damage. So if you're looking to invest, you want to you know, take advantage of what I think is the greatest wealth transfer of all time, you're going to need great credit. We'd love to help get you there. Greatcreditfast.com. Take a look at this. I mean, this is unbelievable. Regulators now want regional banks to issue more debt to cover losses if they fail, right? And so how is this actually going to work? Here's how it works. Regulators said Tuesday that they'll be asking banks to at least $100 billion in assets to beef up the resolution plans, which would make it easier to unwind the institutions if they were to blow up. So you think about it. It positions these banks so they can easily get acquired. Just like Janet Yellen said. Janet Yellen said that prepare and expect more bank consolidation. So this is what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to see more and more and more banks start to fail. And the reason for this, especially these regional banks, the reason for this is they make their survival, they make ends meet by investing depositors' funds. And when they have deposits that are far below their norms, which now that seems to be the case, people are pulling their money out of banks, they have less money today, they are dependent heavily on credit, and they're defaulting more and more and more on bills. This is a very, very challenging environment for a lot of these regional banks. And as they start to increase the liquidity requirements, all that's gonna do is put more and more and more pressure on these banks, which to me seems like that's the intent. The new proposal are the, lead, the latest attempt by regulators to strengthen their oversight on banks following the turmoil that began in the spring last month. They outlined a separate set of rules that require banks to lead to 100 billion in assets to increase capital flow. FDIC Chair Martin Grunberg said Tuesday that asking mid-sized banks to issue more long-term debt would marginally increase funding costs and may pull down a key measure of bank profitability by roughly three points, right? Three basis points. And look at these banks that downgraded. They were downgraded inside of the last three weeks. You have Commerce, BOK Financial, M&T Bank, Old National Bank Corp, Prosperity. Yeah, I mean, you have all these different banks. Pinnacle, you have now six other banks that are under review, right? Some really, really big, big names here that a lot of Americans bank at and depend heavily on US Bank Corp. And you have 11 banks with negative outlooks. I believe this is positioning America for a massive bank consolidation. And I think Jerome Powell, as he continues to increase interest rates at the same exact time they're doing all these new measures, this is uh, it's game over. It's a knockout for a lot of these banks. It's a really, really, really big problem. And as that is happening, commercial real estate, according to Goldman Sachs, around 80% of all bank loans for commercial properties come from regional banks. Think about this. A trillion dollars of these loans has to get refinanced in the next 12 months, and regional banks hold 800 billion of it. Like that is crazy. And from now until 2027, $2.7 trillion in these loans, of these commercial loans, has to get refinanced. This is just commercial property, not adjustable rate, you know, or home equity lines of credit or any of these other types of loans that many Americans get from these small regional banks. This is just commercial. It's a bloodbath for these banks. It's a really, really big problem. But my big concern here is America. America is built on small business, and small U.S. businesses are and towns are likely to be hit by hardest by bank turmoil. So if you look, small business rely more on small banks than other firms. And you just look, loans to larger businesses, right? And loans to small businesses, right here, 10 billion to 250 million. But you start to look at these smaller entities, it's all 
small banks, right? It's all these small banks that are funding these operations. Small businesses rely on banks for financing, and you look the same exact thing, right? All small banks are starting to, I mean, this is, this is a really, really unfortunate situation that these banks were forced to take on over the last few years with reducing capital requirements to basically zero, incentivizing mass, mass lending, and putting these banks into a place where they're not going to be able to weather the storm. Meanwhile, these large, big, you know, too big to fail banks are protected. So it's, a, it's an unfortunate scenario. Capital One posts 60% profit drop in Q1 as credit card defaults mount. What I think is ultimately going to happen, I think in the next couple of years, this came out uh, literally five, ten minutes ago. Uh, this is Market Watch. How biometrics could change the way consumers pay online and in stores. I think that we will likely see a scenario where there's maybe a dozen or two dozen really, really big banks. They start to close more and more and more locations. Like what we're seeing, we're seeing thousands of bank locations around the country being closed right now. And I think they're going to start to rely heavily on digital currencies, biometrics for payments. I think all this stuff is not far away. I would say the next two to five years, right? You're already seeing Amazon right now. Amazon will soon let you pay for groceries with your palm at any Whole Foods. But tech experts warn or urge caution, right? So they're already starting to roll this stuff out. It's really hard to roll all of that out if there's 4,000 you know, banks, right? If there's thousands of bank locations, it's it's nearly impossible. But if there's two dozen or a dozen, it becomes a lot easier. And so you look at what's going on right now, I think we are in this massive change, this massive consolidation that's about to occur. So if you're looking at this and you're like, hey, I want to invest in the great, you know, this big recession that we're stepping into, just know that banks are going to start tightening up lending. They're already tightening up greatly. If you look at where lending was, you know, just five months ago, before Silicon Valley Bank failed, the former five months before that, banks lent between 150 and 200 billion dollars nationally. Over the last five months, banks have only lent 30 billion. They've reduced lending 80 percent. Now, with these new capital requirements, we're going to start likely seeing more and more of these regional banks start to fail. And I think they're going to continue to contract funding in a big, big way. And so if you're looking to get financing, maybe you want to buy a car, you want to you know, fund, a, fund a business, you want to invest in real estate, you're going to need great credit to do it. Like exceptional credit, not 698, not 710. Like you're going to want to be 770, 780. You're, you're going to want to be a top tier borrower. So you have options, lending options. Because to me, I think we're going to see a lot of people that aren't going to be able to get funding. We're going to see a lot of people that are going to need access to money. And they're going to start selling off assets to make ends meet just to try to weather this unfortunate, unfortunate storm that is likely about to hit America. Look at this. Companies with fewer than 100 employees are a critical part of the U.S. economy. They employ 35% of the private sector workforce and generate a quarter of the gross output. And they disproportionately rely on small banks for borrowing, receiving almost 70% of the commercial industrial loans from banks with less than $250 billion in assets and 30% from banks with less than $10 billion in assets versus 45% and 10% for larger businesses, respectively. Goldman Sachs economist Ronnie Walker and Manuel wrote, in the team's report put together, at least 70% of small business lending is done by smaller banks in 95% of counties, which accounts for more than 80% of GDP. So this is a true crisis. They say that, you know, combating inequality and, you know, they want to, you know, help people. When, when you have these small banks, when you position these small banks for failure, that's not helping anybody. It's not helping anybody but the big guy. You know, the big guy is the one that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, whereas uh, the everyday American, the middle class, they're the ones that, you know, get kicked in the teeth for this, right? This is absolutely an uh, interesting situation, and it's undeniable to see what's actually going on. Prepare yourself. Position yourself. We are in the greatest wealth transfer of all time. It started three years ago. The next three years are going to be unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Drop your comments below. Hit the like button. Add me on IG. And if you want to fix your credit, you want to position yourself for the greatest wealth transfer of all time, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, you have a problem on your credit report, do not let one situation, two situations, three situations on your report hold you down from what I believe is going to be the greatest wealth transfer of all time. The last thing you want 
is to be stuck in a corner, not able to get access to funding, not able to you know, make any moves when you know, there's a lot of distress in the market. You want to position yourself for this because I think this is going to be unreal. I am betting Jerome Powell is going to increase interest rates at this upcoming meeting in September. And the following meeting, I think they're going to continue to keep interest rates higher for longer, putting the pressure on these regional banks. You're going to start seeing consolidation of these banks before our very eyes. It's going to change everything that we know about America. Drop below. Let's have a conversation about this. This is absolutely crazy. We live in crazy, crazy times that are just about to get a hell of a lot crazier.